Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's day is May 15th, 2020. The time is 15.25. Boy! Or 325 p.m. for all of you plebs. Thank you so much for joining us, me, <laughs> for the news today. May the 15th be with you. That's right, yes. Payday, actually. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That's a fucking sensitive topic right now. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to slip right out. Um, well, <laughs> at least it's not rent due day. Okay, there. Okay, that too soon. I know too soon. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like it just came out. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the news. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have we have a number of things to cover today. Uh, we have. Uh, I started incorporating more game announcements and stuff into this uh, because. Because you know, a lot of us, that's all we have to look forward to is game announcements right now. So might as well go ahead and include them in the news. Uh, we did do a news last week, but I, but after looking at my list here, I'm, I'm very glad that I did uh, take the time to go ahead and get uh, things set up for news today. Because um, usually I skip a week because not a lot of news during the quarantine because nobody's going out and getting in trouble. But people are managing to get in trouble and cause controversy and be dramatic, uh, even from the comfort of their very own homes. Starting with Twitch. And the Safety Advisory Council that they announced uh, yesterday. Um, boy, it's been a wild 24 hours for this council. They just they just started. So the Twitch Ad Safety Advisory Council is made up of eight people uh, from various industries and backgrounds. And there are, I believe, three streamers on that list. <sighs> Twitch announcing that they are fixing themselves again. Yeah. Wait, it already has drama? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh... <laughs> TSA all over again. Yeah, it actually T A T T S A. Wow, yes, it is. It is TSA all over again. So here's what their mission is. Yes, Co Carnage is one. I'll, we'll go through the list in a second. Um, it's <laughs> all right, so here's a list of things that they they basically help um, uh, help advise. Right? They aren't necessarily the policy makers. They will advise. Notice the word advise is there. Okay. So zoom in for y'all. There we go. Drafting new policies and policy updates, developing products and features to improve safety and moderation, promoting healthy streaming and work-life balance habits, protecting the interests of marginalized groups, identifying emerging trends that could impact the Twitch experience. All of this sounds great. All of it sounds fine. Where is my light mode? Nope. <sighs> Shut up. All of this sounds fine. It sounds fine. I don't care. I mean, as long as nothing really changes, I think it's fine, right? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Ko actually was pretty was pretty straightforward the way he thought about it so here we go go and let co speak for himself um things things that i feel are kind of like common sense approaches that's why i'm on this council um that's what i'm trying to do so that's basically the only reason i'm there um i don't want to see anything get any harder on twitch i don't want to see a whole bunch more rules i don't want to see things change um a lot of things that we do on this channel or more importantly that i don't do I don't think should be outlawed on other channels. I'm huge about freedom of choice and letting people put on the show they want to, while clearly in black and white, as much as possible, knowing what is not okay to do. And then most importantly, being able to work around that to deliver the show that they want to. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to kind of clear that up and let people know what my perspective is here. Um, I've had a lot of people be like, oh man, are you guys gonna be adding a bunch more rules and stuff like that? I'm gonna be fighting against that stuff. Uh See? so. This, I, from that perspective, I feel like this is, this is sensible. It's like, okay, sure. Like, like, I understand that in general, Twitch is viewed as a platform that doesn't really have a clear defined set of rules, right? I think we all kind of agree on that. There's a lot, there's a lot of, you know, same things that you would think, oh, that's a ban. Oh no, it's not a ban. It's a feature. <laughs> it's a front page feature is what that is. That's, that's okay. That didn't really work out the way I kind of thought it would, but uh, does get extra money for it. So from what I understand, it seems like a yes. It seems like a yes, because I've seen there's there's three of them, right? And uh, one of them did make comment about how they work for Twitch now. And so it makes me feel like maybe there's some kind of money exchanging hands here. I would assume that somebody who is tasked with the job of helping advise 
a multi-million dollar company. I don't know how much money they make. It's a billion, right? I guess we attach them to, to Amazon. Trillion dollar company. Uh, they're going to get some kind of, of compensation for their time. It seems only fair. We're going to pay them with exposure. That shit doesn't work. Uh, he also went on Twitter and basically said the same thing. So I joined this initiative to help bring three main things to this process. Transparency between partner and Twitch and Twitch and the public. Consistency in the offenses that are picked and the penalties delegated. Again, this is this is exactly what I was saying. It's like this is the kind of stuff that people are, uh, um, that in general, we view Twitch as being inconsistent in this, in this field. Uh, fairness. All partners treated on the exact same level. Great. That all sounds fine. Again, from this perspective, it sounds fine. In general, I would say that as long as that is the mindset that we're kind of keeping here, then cool. And uh, like I said before, Vaymar, um, they, they are advising, as I showed right, right there, advice. They are advising. Uh, but they should still get some kind of comp compensation for it, all of them, everybody involved. I'm fairly certain that, you know, people who are, <clears throat> so first off, we have Alex Holmes. Uh, he's the deputy CEO for nonprofit uh, Diana Award, which is a legacy to Princess Diana's belief that young people have the power to change the world. Uh, and then some more stuff, Go cool Carnage. I believe he does not need any introduction, especially amongst some of us, but he is a streamer. Uh, he's very, he's known for being just, very friendly, positive community and everything. Um, and uh, let's see, we have a cup of noodle. She's a partner Twitch ambassador and host commentator, the mayor of Cupton, lover of zombies and a music connoisseur. Her streams range from playing games to hosting conventions and on-site interviews to providing colorful commentary at esports events. Uh, da, 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 da. And then we have the uh, Emma is the director of the Center for Democracy and Technology's Free Expression Project that leads. Da, 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 da. So this is like you know, there, there's there's tons of 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 uh, not just individuals, but you know people from groups that are a part of this thing, outside groups. Uh, we have uh, ferociously Steph, and she's also a full time streamer. Uh, she's competitive coll collegiate heroes of of the storm in 2016, and we have Doctor. I don't know if that's Hindu Jice or Hindu Jace, uh, or if I fucked him up both ways, but doctor, <laughs> he's a professor in the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice at Florida Atlantic University. Like it's a wide, wide, wide range of folks all the way down. And then someone who's clearly a streamer. <laughs> Green hair streamer, there you go. <laughs> so there has been some controversy here some of you guys have already pointed out with certain people steph has made some comments about she's not a fan of of uh uh a voice chat which we're going to talk a bit about this because while i understand that well let me just talk about it let's just talk about it a little bit all right so first off i saw the news from the perspective of live stream fail which immediately means you need to investigate it okay <laughs> okay anytime you get wind of news from lsf you should probably go to investigate it first to make sure <laughs> to see exactly what happened all right because you don't always get both sides of the story you don't always get the full picture and everything uh and from what i've seen in some of the posts on lsf because it was a top five post uh some of the some of the uh some of the accusations and some of the things directed towards um uh, ferociously steph right is it, is it ferociously stuff ferociously stuff yes um were were actually founded not unfounded uh so if I scroll down here, I was I was reading through the bios of everybody and I noticed this says um, da, da, da. it says her fight for inclusivity includes creating a competitive team composed entirely of marginalized gamers and vehemently opposing non-inclusive mechanics such as voice chat. I thought that last part was made up or, or taken out of context until I went and I actually read all this to figure it out. And I thought it was weird that that was put in here when every single other entry does not include some kind of direct policy, you know, anything, right? Cup of Noodle does all this stuff. Welcome to the team. Uh, Co Carnage does all this stuff. Welcome to the team. And if I approach these stuff, she does all this stuff, also does not like voice chat. And so people latched onto that pretty, pretty harshly. Um, there are some clips. Floating around, uh, one of them I'm not going to play for you guys today uh, <laughs> is uh, is a clip of her, and you probably you're going to see this when you go digging. But she 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 is, I guess, uh, imitating a deer. I don't know exactly how to put it. Maybe I'm a boomer or something, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, just imitating a deer of some sort. It is 
not something I've seen on Twitch necessarily, and it's not something a lot of people have seen on Twitch, so it's different. People kind of attack it. Personally, if somebody's into that kind of thing, I don't care. I don't care. I think it's fine. What I care about is the voice chat thing. So I went through her uh, through her Twitter to see like how is she responding to this to to all of this uh, these attacks, right? Because it seems that of everybody that's on this list, she's the one that's getting the brunt of the uh, of the attacks here. Uh, her opposition to the harassment, but she blames the entire feature. So, so uh, she did respond to the criticism, and here's what she says. She says, uh, sure are a lot of people trying to make me and my arguments look bad right now, clipping and retweeting my most frustrated takes, perpetuating conclusions I've never made. Few people are being rational. Most want to dogpile. Uh, most are being hateful. It's a lot. And that's true, right? It's a lot. Uh, this was ta this was done uh, at 9 o'clock this morning, so, you know, just a few hours ago. Uh, and then I went back a little bit further. I think, uh, how much farther did I go for this one? Let me see. Uh, yesterday, for this tweet, that said... Ooh, yeah, a whole lot of people with cis white male voices thinking voice chat is critical to competitive t games being competitive. Tell me more about how we'll solve syst systemic misogyny and everything will be fine. LOL. I felt like this was a pretty yikes thing to say for somebody who just recently got put into a position of authority. I don't want to say authority, a position of advisory. Okay. Uh, and this made me think, ugh. Like I want, I wanted, so at this point I, I was disappointed because I wanted for the claims that people were making to be unfounded, right? But this, this I felt was, uh, was an attack, right? Like was definitely a, uh, like lashing out. I don't want to say an attack. It was lashing out. Uh, yeah. Anytime I see cis white male blank, 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 I my, automatically just think, okay, mm, uh, <laughs> monster cloud. God damn it. <laughs> so, so. I'm looking for redemption, okay? I don't care about anything else related to ferociously stuff, okay? All I care about is that this is a person that's going to be on an advisory board that represents people like me, okay? People like you, people like everybody that is uh, that is a streamer on Twitch, okay? I want to know if this person has a history of basically just hating white cisgender men for whatever reason, which in that case, I would feel like doesn't belong on the board. Just because you are a part of a, a part of a marginalized group does not necessarily mean you are qualified to make decisions for said marginalized group or everybody. Okay, this is the way it works. <laughs> so I decided to go through <clears throat> her. Uh, I guess I did. I dug through her tweet history, and here's what I discovered. I discovered that there was basically no history of her just lashing out against cis white males. This was something that seemed very uh very recent as a matter of fact just that recent tweet um in her history i went through i went through cis i went through male i went through men i went through all that stuff and i was relieved to find that she does not have it's, this is not like an ongoing thing so to me what it feels like is somebody was really upset with a lot of the a, a lot of the attacks that was coming her way and she lashed out on twitter unprofessional Unprofessional, absolutely. Definitely, in my opinion, doesn't really make that somebody qualified for working on a board of advisories. But uh, did she scrub her past tweets? I mean, maybe, but there's still a lot here, right? <clears throat> or she del you could you could say maybe she deleted them all, but I mean, I mean, did she? I don't know. Like, why would she? If she deleted them all, I don't know why she would say it again, right? So I did I did find that this issue. So the so the so the cis white man hating thing seems like it's not a an ongoing thing. Like it's not like I follow a couple of people that you know, and I unfollow them quickly. It's like that just go on and on about cis white males, right? Uh, and that's not the case here. This feel this feels like somebody lashing out in anger and saying something they regret. A heated gamer moment, if you will. So here is a tweet from 2017. Uh, where she says, many women and other minorities choose to participate in voice chat to help fight for their right to exist in the gaming world. Thank you. This activism is inspiring and productive, but it is not a battle you should be forced to fight. So it seems like this is her thing. Like she, this is not like something she's pulled out her ass like just two, like, you know, two months ago. Hey, I'm part of this advisory board. What's something I could really like pick on? Voice chat. <laughs>
<laughs> no, this is something that she has been ch trying championing for the past three years in this case. I don't know why it's a fight. I don't agree with it necessarily. Um, I understand that, yes, there's, I mean, there, there are situations often, often where a woman or uh, somebody is trans who maybe their voice does not sound quite like, you know, cis white male you know yeah whatever uh i understand that those voices are going to bring some kind of just shitty people to the table and they're going to say things right um but i don't blame that on voice chat there's other things that that contribute to this or that can help in enforce this um using a service well you, she's she's speaking about it from a competitive perspective era so yes that is something that is pretty uh pretty much not optional in most cases uh it is not all voice chats fault it is humans fault yeah uh when it's good times it's never a problem only problems make the headlines uh her position on voice chat came out when here's the storm implemented it that's right yeah so again this is not something that's new so my take on this is that i don't agree with the voice chat thing at all I think that's the wrong thing to attack policy-wise. I hope that it is flatly ignored by this advisory panel uh, in terms of, you know, I don't know how this would integrate into Twitch somehow, right? But anything that prevents people from communicating the way that they do uh, regularly uh, uh, in video games should not be touched at all. Um, I feel like this is a person that was attacked, okay? And that lashed out because I can't find a history of them lashing out at random does that make sense i don't agree with the policy i don't feel this person's qualified for the position but at the same time i don't feel like she's as villainous as everybody makes her seem right sure maybe some of the practices that she does in her off time is a bit strange and maybe different from what i normally do on a daily basis but so what there's a lot of people that do a lot of weird shit that maybe you're not into it's weird but it's not your business <laughs> it's not your business but I don't think she belongs on the advisory council. I don't. Shofi, shut up. <laughs> so in response to this, uh, this is uh, from a Newsweek article. It says, uh, this is from Twitch. Uh, Twitch says, it is unfortunate to see a member of the advisory council targeted for harassment. The safety of our council members is our top priority, and we've taken preventative measures to help ensure their safety and well-being. I don't know what that means, actually. Like I have, what does that actually mean? Uh, we are in close communication with each of uh, each of the members and are working diligently to provide them with whatever support that they may need. So, um, <clears throat> bring back anime, just get out of here. Uh, they need somebody that does the weird stuff to advise policy for all the weird stuff on Twitch. So that's and that's what I was saying, Serene. Is like just because you are part of a marginalized group does not necessarily make you an authority on what the best needs are for a marginalized group. And you know. I don't know. I don't know personally if if ferociously stuff is uh is really fit for the job. But I mean, lashing out like that, cis white gender male like that, poison that's poison the well, man. Like that hurts. <laughs> like doesn't belong. Um, people with gender should not be counseling anything. Uh, if she believes voice chat is a problem, then she believes people speaking at all in life is a problem, and we should have our mouths sewn shut. Yeah, voice chat is not the problem. And I also want, I actually wonder if like, maybe this is one of those things that you harp on for so long that you can't necessarily get off of it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you champion something for so long that if you were to back off of it now, after three years of, of being, you know, anti-voice and you back off of it, you might, you might just lose your credibility. You might feel like you lose your credibility. When in reality, I think that a lot of people would be like, you know what? I'm glad that you, that you came to this conclusion on your own and that you're now going after the actual problem and we'll see actual policy that could address these issues that do occur in games. Now, that's not something for Twitch to do. Personally, I don't feel like it. Uh, already, we have issues with um, uh, already we have issues with uh, with uh, people getting banned for something that voice chat said, right? So that's already a thing, basically discouraging people from using voice chat sometimes, especially with with pugs. And we've had that issue too. Like I remember we played PUBG, and you turn on voice when you're in the plane initially, and it was just like. Oh my God. I couldn't, I actually could not believe what I was hearing. <laughs> I felt, I felt like an old lady. It's like, oh, <laughs> like, oh my God. Uh, you should talk to her about it and see her opinions on the matter. I mean, I might do that actually. Yeah, I might. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to follow her work and see what she does. Um, but uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think this is something that, I don't think this particular 
issue with voice chat, which is what everybody's harping on. Uh, I don't think the stuff that she's going to want to let go. And, you know, but at the same time, I don't think it's something that uh, that's going to get any kind of traction. I did think it was weird that it was in the bio. I felt like the bio was something to introduce and tell, about your, tell people about your credentials and everything and let them know who you are, what you plan to do and all not plan to do. But, you know, just you're happy to be here kind of thing. But, you know, hers definitely came off on the offensive and just kind of felt like it re didn't really belong in that. Um Ha, she's online to do a surprise interview. <laughs> oh God, Jesus! Uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> I I don't have any questions prepared or anything like that, but I would seriously, I I have no issues whatsoever with talking to anybody about uh about what they believe. Like I said, I don't I don't have a problem with Steph as a person. I don't have a problem with what Steph likes to do in her off time, right, or her on time. I guess with streaming, she's her job. Um. I don't have a problem with any of that stuff. I don't have a problem with who she is. I, I, I take the stance with just about everybody, right? It's like, I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. That's fine. Um, but lashing out like she did yesterday, I felt like that was uh, that the cis white male gender thing, whatever the fuck it was. Uh, I felt like that was a bit, I felt like that was a bit much. And not really representative of, uh, of a council that's supposed to be representing people from including cis white men. <laughs> <laughs> just didn't really feel like that belonged there. Um, most of the reason why I turn off voice chats for the most part is there's not a small subset of people that are about as smart as a bag of potatoes. And that's an insult to potatoes. That's true. It's true. More wrinkles in a potato than some people's brains. Yep. Um, I still haven't had chats. Right? I still haven't talked to you and ear about anime chat. That's right. Or feet. What is it we guys with feet today? <laughs> I'd almost say for good faith's sakes, take her off the council. You know, I, I was talking to somebody else too about, uh, about this and their first take initially was... Uh, um, was the same thing, like, you know, take her off the council and all that stuff. And, you know, that seems to be the take that takes for a lot of people across the board. But, you know, I, I, I feel like Twitch is committed at this point. You know, they're committed. If you were to remove somebody like her from, from it, then it would seem like the bad guys win, you know? And that's primarily because, yes, LSF made a mockery of her uh, because of shit that she enjoys doing personally. And, you know, I felt like you know, that's, that's LSF going to LSF, but it's still fucked up. You know, um, but if you want to attack the policy, I mean, this is anything in politics, right? It's like, don't attack the person, attack the policy, you know, and that's, that's basically what we're talking about here today. And I feel like that's the, what should the, what the focus should be. Um, let me see. Uh, I thought Apex Legends sort of combated voice chat toxicity by developing a robust ping system. That's right. They did. Uh, I had to be up for anime chat. You guys anime chat. Get out of here. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's dead. Until further notice. Uh, it's, it's this white male bullshit tweet while being on Twitch payroll advisory council as a reflection on Twitch. Exactly. That's at the end of the day. Thank you, Ira. At the end of the day, that's what it is. It's it's the cis white male thing happened while she was on the advisory council. And for me, that's grounds to say no. Ima imagine, imagine if Co Carnage made some kind of comments about about the black community or the transgender community or whatever. Imagine if he said something like that, right? There's no fucking way he would be on that council. There's no way. And so that's what's fucked up about it. Uh, it is fucked up for uh, people LSFing things, but uh, she seems to have a personal agenda for this policy stuff. She seems like, well, I guess we'll, we'll find out because I don't think that, that she's going to be removed from the council anytime soon. So double standards. What? I know double standards. What the hell? I mean, that's it's double standards. It's everywhere, man. It's everywhere. Speaking of. Speaking of double standards, by by and by that I mean the letter D, and by that I mean I'm fucking terrible at this. By that I mean Doom Eternal. This is a fun one. So <laughs> just show us the D. Uh, yes, I guess no. I, I saw Viva, but I'm not. I'm not here to. I'm not here to exploit that. Like that's not what I was here to do. So um, you can go find that. Trying so hard, I know. Where's Josh? I should. I know. I need like a phone, like phone a friend or something, right? Call his ass up. Josh, Josh, Josh. Give, hey, hey, give me, give me, a, give me a quick, uh, quick transition here. Where are you trying to go? Trying to go from, uh, from cis white gender males to uh, to doom. <laughs> that's an easy one, actually. That's a, that's a direct line, actually. Wow, it's a straight line there. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> so, uh. This this thread was actually on Reddit as well, uh, but this particular thread uh, we're reading on the Bethesda official forums. Speaking of demons from hell, it's just white. Wow, there you go. It's perfect. Oh man, sip. All right. So 
There is an update recently. If you check your, uh, if you check your Steam, and then when you go to your Steam, if you check your Doom, and then if you click right here, you'll see that there's an update queued. There's a big update that's out. Whoa, what's in this update? Well, according to this, something called Denuvo Anti-Tamper, uh, as well as Denuvo Anti-Cheat. So I'm going to read some of this, okay, because this is important to, to understand, right? So uh, Denuvo Anti-Tamper, henceforth, DAT is software used to obfuscate code during the compiling process. This makes it harder for pirates slash crackers to crack the software through reverse engineering. The software has no bearing on the operating system, but it is built into the executable. It may cause game performance issues at times, but that is the extent of it. That is what people generally are talking about when they say the game has de nouveau. De nouveau anti-cheat, henceforth DAC, uh, is the new anti-cheat introduced with update one. It is an extremely invasive anti-cheat software that runs at ring zero. Does this sound familiar, Valorant, uh, of your operating system? Read the thread for more information. So the next line here says, after the fact addition, to make it extra clear, the fact that we are we were not informed that such an intrusive piece of software would be added to the game after the purchase is unacceptable. Worse yet, it's required to be running to uh, to so much as run the game, multiplayer or not. And so that's something they discovered is that the driver for it does indeed load when you launch the game. Um, and yet another reason not to buy Denuvo games, but that's, and, and, and Serene, that's, I mean, as, as they're pointing out, like this is an after the fact addition of the new de nouveau anti-cheat that runs very similar or at least on the same level as valorant does um i said i said while we were talking about valorant that you know this is this is scary because it sets a precedent right like this could set a precedent for other companies trying to get in on this ring zero bullshit and you know if we normalize this kind of you know intrusive behavior the same way that we've normalized having you know a, a, an amazon device that you could talk to or uh or another device that you can speak to right if we normalize that kind of behavior then it becomes part of our everyday lives is this something that we want to go ahead and just normalize and just allow everybody ring zero access to our systems probably not didn't the non drm version get out into the wild probably which is probably why they jumped on this is this why your, my PC suddenly started running like shit after updated Doom? A lot of people are indeed saying that they are experiencing uh, performance issues with uh, with with Doom now uh, because of this or after the fact. Uh, can I get a refund now because that's some shady ass marketing to sell a game and then add intrusive crap later? It is. It is. I don't know if you can actually get an, a, a, a uh, if you could get one a, a refund um, now, but you could try. I think through Steam, you might be able to, honestly. Like, I'm sure you probably could. My CPU is spin up to 100% when idle for no reason. Just uninstalled, it will update. Oh, interesting, interesting. Um, now, this would be this would be a sample size of one with Sam in, within this community, but that is the general consensus that that it is something that is happening. So, this thread is very, it's, it's, it's very thoughtful. Like, it, it does goes through and it takes, it takes into consideration that the person reading it may or may not really have any kind of, like, tech background or, like, an understanding of the, of the inner workings of the kernel, right? Do you know the inner workings of your kernel? Hmm? Um, not feeling so bad you haven't bought the game yet? I'm upset because I want to finish it. <laughs> uh, so, wait, I probably fired up without updating it, right? Hmm. There we go. I don't need I don't need empowered demons and all that stuff. Just the regular stuff. Uh, so uh, da, 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 da. so here is um, so they in space do nouveau anti -cheat, anti cheat uses a kernel mode driver. Use of the kernel mode driver starts when the game launches. It stops when uh, stops when the game stops for any reason. So if you're wondering why this is a big deal, um, it's a big deal because the more things that you have running at ring zero, running uh, basically at the root of your system, the more potential for intrusion. Right. So if you have if you have antivirus, you know, obviously Windows and, you know, I don't know, something else like chilling down in, you know, ring zero. That's only a handful of things. But the more you add to that list, the more vulnerabilities you introduce to the system. And so while you could make an argument that says and I've seen this argument already that Chrome and all these other sites or all these other um, apps that you run could potentially key log and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, that's true. They could potentially keylog, but they can't necessarily just delete my system straight up. Sure, there's been exploits and everything that's happened in the past, and they're typically patched out pretty quickly. But these are companies that we trust to do this, right, at a level that does not necessarily give them access to that route. Now, we are bringing things, more things. We add Valorant. We have, now we have uh, 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 Denuvo 
anti-cheat deck. Uh, and who knows what we're going to have next. Next Battle.net will have something. But you know, Blizzard will put out something that's going to run in the background because they want to make sure that Overwatch doesn't have any cheaters. Uh, and so it's like, what are you going to do? Like Every platform, every game that gets announced is going to have its own anti-cheat that's going to be installed at Ring Zero. And then one of them has a lazy, just one, one lazy uh, engineer just maybe leaves an exploit in because he didn't, didn't see it or nobody caught it. Nobody who checked the code saw it. And then all of a sudden... That's it. And then all, all the games, all the computers that are associated with that particular, uh, you know, software could be exploited. If everything is at max security level, is anything actually secure? Kimo Sabi, that's a great, I mean, that's a great line, honestly. Like, it really is. I don't know if you're being facetious, but that's a great line because that's totally true. It's like, if everything at max level security, is anything actually secure? No. Uh, Chrome and such companies are also so big that if we get screwed, a lot of folks uh, get screwed, so it won't stay a secret for long. It's true. Uh, guy, how to downgrade Doom Eternal without the new anti cheat? Had to put Steam in offline mode and then new Sui. I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy that and put it in my notes. Thank you so much for that. Good stuff. Good, good, good. Good man, look at that. Look at my look at my co-host killing it. There we go. Um, so they said they added the actual notes said that they added it specifically uh, for battle mode on PC. And as I think Saturn said, it's like, oh, they have uh, they have multiplayer. Apparently, it's a kind of a fun side mode. It's not really, you know, P9, all the things. Uh, it, it's probably, it's not really a competitive uh, gaming or a competitive multiplayer. It's more of a fun multiplayer. And I have not played it personally, but uh, that seems to be the general consensus. And so I don't really understand why they would need this unless they're just, I don't know, like just setting setting the expectation now because everybody's harping on Valorant shit, right? And so if everyone's harping on Valorant shit, they can just go ahead and just slap theirs on top of it. And now the now the anger is gonna be distributed evenly amongst two instead of just being one on the other. Uh on the on the other on the one side, Denuvo has been doing his job really well as far as preventing the game from getting cracked. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure it probably still exists out there in some in some capacity that in a cracked a cracked version of it. But uh but I mean I understand having the uh having the need to have anti-cheat and to keep people from pirating your shit and everything but this is definitely a case of of tsa it's kind of like you basically you're putting everybody under the microscope and actually you know potentially jeopardizing their systems um just to catch the handful of people that might exploit your game and maybe you lose a hundred thousand dollars or something like that or two hundred thousand dollars or whatever uh but the potential loss from an exploit could be even more than that and I'm sure it's going to happen. Like, I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure that we are not far away from some, especially if we keep getting more of these ring zero bullshit things running in the background. We're not far from, from a uh, huge meltdown <laughs> at some point of an exploit getting out and then people trying to, then people taking advantage of it and turning into a mess. Um, uh, most companies remove see it, it adds like two weeks on on average. I think recall seeing the most companies remove it after it's been cracked. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I think uh, Final Fantasy. Oh no, uh, oh I can't, I can't remember. There, there, there's games that I've seen have removed Denuvo after a certain amount of time because I guess nobody's pirating after a certain amount, certain amount of time. Maybe it is a uh, uh, maybe it is a uh, Final Fantasy. Shut up. Um, a licensing thing, right? Something like that. What is this, boy? Oh man, boom! Give me a kiss. I love you, buddy. Mwah. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age removed it. There we go. Take out the hookup, boy. Oh, Modella, that's right. Mm. My favorite is Dosaki's Amber, but uh, but Modelo was uh, was available at Costco, so I had to go with what I could, you know. Can he deliver there? <laughs> Kissing it. <him. laughs> I know. Where's the mask? Where's the mask? Um, so yeah, just just to wrap this up, like it's scary the precedence that this could send, right? To like other game developers. Well, if if if, if these two companies, if I could do it, and Bethesda could do it. Why aren't the other big companies doing it? Why, why don't we have uh, you know, a Blizzard, you know, ring zero anti-cheat system in place, you know? And that might be coming. Like, that might be something that's going to show up with Diablo 4. Here's Diablo 4. Guess what? It also comes with some kind of kernel-based uh, anti-cheat. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, 
it's a scary precedent to set because it could potentially lead to exploits of people's systems and, you know, doing some kind of lasting damage to, to just computers. <laughs> Why do these fucks need that ring zero access for a simple thing like anti-fuck cheat? <laughs> I know, Incogni. I'd always listening see see it's 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 standardized now right like it's just part it's part of our lives i don't want but i don't want ring zero shit to be part of our lives that's all wow jeez incogni you're triggering my uh triggering my girl over here man yeah yeah the CS nsa everybody's listening and hmm ring zero huh <laughs> jesus i mean probably it's gonna get to the point to where like Facebook and some of the other larger social medias will uh, have some kind of app that, that they already do it to your phone. So it's like, but I don't can't, I can't think of any, is there like a standalone messenger for, uh, for PC? I don't think so. But if they do, if there is, you could probably bet that shit's probably like at least ring one, maybe. I don't know. But yep. Um, CSI heard, man, that's so funny. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Vexor, she got it. Discord. Oh yeah, there you go. Discord Messenger. Yeah. Um, Discord Messenger. Damn it, why to call it that? Era. Planning them seeds. As someone that plays mostly Blizzard games, I will 100 percent stop playing if one of them they if uh every one of them if they add it. Yeah. Th that sucks though, right? Like that sucks. You don't have to make that decision. So I'm pretty sure easy anti-cheat and battle eye run the same way, just never told people. Uh, I, God, you know what? If we find out, if we find out that I don't know if that's the case or not, but uh, and I didn't honestly, I didn't look into Battle Eye or if uh, Easy Anti EAC uh, both do it. But if um, uh, Signal open source and any encryption get it, oh, there you go. Uh, but yeah, I am curious if uh, if where those run. Um, speaking of speaking of uh, and and encryption, I don't know if you guys saw U.S. based folks, folks, but I believe it was today or yesterday, uh, the Senate voted to allow the FBI to uh, subpoena your uh, your browser his history from your ISP. So, if you uh, if you don't have Tor installed, maybe it's time. <laughs> so there you go. That's all for that one. Um, moving on, manga S. Uh, yes. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So, and I guess if we're going to do game announcements, we should probably, we should probably talk about game, game's ending. Yeah, sad. But you guys remember Darwin Project? Darwin Project Battle Royale ends development. Servers stay up for now. Uh, no, <laughs> we played, we played it a, a few times actually. Uh, and actually, you know what's funny? We enjoyed it. But it did get uh, so if you so first off, if you're not familiar with it, I actually believe I, I I have a video. I think I have like a, a BFF report like video on this. But uh, Darwin Project was really awesome because it allowed somebody to be the overseer of a last man standing battle royale style game, and it allowed people. It also allowed Twitch to kind of interact and vote for things and all that stuff. Like it was it it was such a cool concept, and the gameplay was fun. Um, you get to the point where your characters are like jumping like in crazy air and nailing his trick shots and everything like it was a fun game uh, while it lasted but it just it never was able to hold on to people's attention and even us we played it a whole bunch and then we kind of just drifted away from it. we never went back to it um but that's all it had one game mode yeah exactly it was just one game mode uh and then and yeah, like ryback says it was like at, at that point when this game came out like we were already inundated with just with brs left and right and so it just didn't yeah bad timing it just didn't really have the longevity that they had hoped for and so they noticed that the numbers were uh it says anyhow don't get too excited because darwin project is shutting down which probably won't surprise anyone given that its launch numbers were so low which also was pretty surprising given that it was a fun game um scavenger studio says it will no longer develop the game and the servers are effectively slated for execution probably next year it is with a heavy heart that we have decided to stop developing new features for the game the studio says april's update was the last one for the foreseeable future so yeah, great idea for interactive esports. It was. It was a good one, man. It was a good one. But you know, it's uh, sometimes some some games just don't get uh, don't get picked up, and they end up uh, disappearing. Kind of like the calling. The calling disappeared for a bit, and then came back. The calling is back. That's right. TLDR servers live Thursday, May 14th. Uh, Xbox One now, PC later. Uh, big performance enhancements. Uh, 
No, not FTP. <laughs> not free to play, but if you ever played it, you have it. Uh, $5.99 on Xbox Store. If you never played it, uh, one free online match a day. Uh, one free online match per day? Hold up. <laughs> Ooh, that does not sound... That doesn't sound like free to play. <laughs> Thonk, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they are going to a uh, a system that you have to pay into playing outside of your initial free match a day. Uh, it does goblin graphics. It does give you give you kind of like that mobile game vibes, the, the Candy Crush uh, vibes, uh, where you are. You basically get a number of free games a day. Uh, Trials Frontier had this where you had like amount of fuel that you get per day. And then you can, uh, uh, and then you'll be able to, you know, buy more if you want to buy more fuel. Uh, EA must have helped with their monetization. It sure seems like it. So here we go right here. So base price is, oh my God, the face. Oh my God, the face. Oh my God. Uh, so the base price is... <laughs> Uh, it's $5.99. One free daily online match token. Win tokens by winning matches. Uh, token packs, three packs, 99 cents. 10 pack, 2 dollars 20 pack, 4 dollars Unlimited online pass, one, seven days, $1.99. 30 day, $5.99. This, this, this seems like the kind of free to play program you'd put together if there was no such thing as whales, right? We all know that there are whales. We know that there are people that are going to make up for the money that we can't spend on a game, right? They're not taking that into account here. That's <laughs> Box price plus sub disguises earning you play. That's right. Uh, you can look at it like a $6 sub base game. That's right. You can, you can look at it as a $6 sub base game, but no one's going to do that though. Like already the game is, I mean, I, I didn't bring, pull up the steam play stats, which doesn't make any sense because the servers were down, but, um, but yeah, it's just not a game that has, that's going to have any kind of huge, uh, you know, player base. Um, Trashy turned the whales and dolphins and such. It is. Uh, I actually, I, I actually opened up this video here and I was, I almost, I almost fell out of my chair looking at the, uh, um, we'll let that play. Looking at the, the likes dislike ratio. Uh, six dollar sub base game a day. No, it's uh, it's seven days for a dollar ninety nine. It just it's nickel and diming, man. These it's like mo it's mobile mobile game prices. You know, it's basically mobile game prices, and it just doesn't really doesn't really work well with the uh, PC gaming community or any community. Honestly, like this is not gonna work for. I mean, it might work on mobile, <laughs> but no, they just need one person to spend that. Well, that's right, one million dollars. That's the problem. Uh, it's the price that arcades used to have. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, actually, if you think about it, too, it's like three matches for 99 cents, 33 cents, so you, maybe you budget for inflation, that 25 cent game went up to 33 cents, even though now the games are like a dollar each, it's ridiculous. It's rising the monetization for some of the pay-to-play pay, uh, pay games back in the early days of AOL. Um, not on Android, iPhone, wrong console. Uh, the ratio, yeah, the ratio is bad. I was actually surprised to see this. I, I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't know it was going to be that bad. Uh, you saw Critical's vid on I haven't seen that, but, um, it sounds like pay to win. <laughs> well, I mean, win to pay, really, because you, you can earn tokens by winning matches, but you have to win the matches. In order to win the matches, you have to play to get good. I mean, if I picked up this game and I started playing right now, I'm probably not going to win any matches anytime soon, so I end up paying in order to get my way there. And even then, I'm not going to win every single match. Just statistically not going to happen. Uh, so there is no free part of that. But, you know, like, I... I, I feel like we've talked about this before, and maybe it was years ago on Twimo, actually. Um, my take on, like, these kinds of things is in a free-to-play environment, yes, you have whales and all that stuff, uh, but the players are the ones that are providing the service, right? Sure, like, they, some of them buy into little things here and their cosmetics or whatever, but it is ultimately the players that end up providing the service because they, they make the world that you created they make it a living thing. Uh, now, I'm not looking at this like an MMO necessarily, because that was an MMO take, Twimo, right? Uh, but that's pretty much still my stance. It's like, you know, in a free-to-play game, it doesn't make any sense to tax the people who are playing it casually and intermittently, because they're the ones providing a service for you in just existing in your game. Uh, I feel like you can copy-paste literally everything you said for when Tor went free-to-play and apply here. You know, that might have been, been when I, was have, I, I had this discussion. I can't remember, but yeah. 
You basically are, yeah. Uh, that's what I see in uh, different hackers sell accounts with tons of tokens. Tar and Tarkov. Did Tarkov do something similar? Not, it's not like this necessarily, but um, uh, this model also seems super odd as a type of game you need to fill. You need to fill to match, uh, but this model limits the ability to easily fill matches. Exactly. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Actually, I didn't go and check his uh, check the recent tweets here, but um, I wonder if there's any mention of anything. Let me see. May. Nope. So I'm looking to see if there's any response anywhere. Nope. So is there? Oh, that sucks. So the calling is live. Blah blah blah. It should plans will announce was later. I mean, it's quite ratioed. 252 comments. 13 retweets. That's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sums it up pretty well, actually. Jeez, man. <sighs> so, uh, so the calling's back and the calling is gone. So that's uh, <laughs> that's out of here. Um, have you guys seen the UE5 announcement? It's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. You know, we get a bunch of, uh, you know, tech demos and everything around this time because E3 and whatnot. But, um, let me lower this some. Uh, and every time we see it, it's like, oh, this looks amazing, right? Remember when video is showing off, like, their their face thing and all that? It was like, wow, it looks gorgeous and all that. Uh, but you ultimately don't really see this stuff in an actual game. Um, it's kind of stepped down just a little bit. Uh, a lot of these are tech demos, small environments, so it's easy for them to, like, chock full of all this stuff. And so you don't really get the detail later. But, I mean, still... Even if this is rolled back a little bit, however it's done, it says no normal maps needed, no triangle limits or whatever. And like all this stuff seems, all this stuff being applied in bits and pieces is going to augment your experience overall. Uh, this is basically a demo for the indie devs, exactly. Uh, triangles are so hot right now, exactly. Uh, Nvidia's new tech demo is playable and pretty cool, awesome. Um, see, here's where all that Fortnite money went to. That's right, funded by, funded by all those kids that we make fun of fucking flossing. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. But, like, this is an incredible walkthrough here. And I know that this may, you, if, you have, if you haven't seen this, you might be thinking, oh, it's some pre-rendered bullshit, whatever. Uh, well, I'll go back to, uh, oops, I lost my spot here. Here we go. Uh, this is the actual dev walkthrough here where they're talking about the game and I bookmarked this here uh, and they're they're actively playing this game right now and this is how they're demoing it so this is part of this they show clips of this in the you know in the launch trailer thing but this is uh yeah this is incredible man like it looks really really good and I realize that you know watching this here on on, on news is not gonna do it much justice um, so definitely go and watch it yourself compression on top of compression and all that good stuff so definitely go watch it yourself if you can uh, but man just just beautiful and even even better i'll leave this up for a second so you guys can watch this i'm gonna lower it a little bit um but even better there is a uh they, they they made changes to the way that they charge for it and i believe they made changes like a year ago or so where they made it like super cheap for indie devs or whatever but now it's free until you earn a million dollars and then they'll start taking like a five percent or whatever so that's pretty impressive like this is a huge thing that that uh that epic is doing for the indie dev community uh anybody could pick anybody can just pick this up ue4 and ue5 and just start working with it and if you come up with a concept that's awesome and you maybe you make you know hundred thousand dollars selling a game off of it whatever you don't owe epic shit which is pretty great uh you, oh is it something like three hundred thousand dollars there you go thank you mimsy I remember they lowered it to something. I couldn't remember what the number was. Uh, see, they, they did say this is running on a PS5 now, and I have a hunch it is a monster machine with twin RTX 2080s with PS5 written on the side with a Sharpie. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's right. I, I didn't mention that part, but yes, they did say that this is a uh, um, that this is all running on the on the PlayStation, and you can actually see the buttons come up every once, interacting buttons and all that stuff that show up every once in a while. Uh, but this is like, I mean, this is the next Laura Croft, man. Like, this looks crazy good. I mean, this is not officially the next Laura Croft. I'm just saying, like, this is what I see when I see this, you know? Uh, Xbox DOA already. Well, we'll see. We'll see. There's still a lot that, uh, that we don't know yet about, uh, about the Xbox sex, sex box series X sex. Yes, that's right. Um, free to first million, then 10%. Was it 10%? Hold on a second. I have the tweet right here. Let me go and pull this up. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. I have the actual tweet from the marketing person here. 
And she says, uh, we want to make it even easier for independent game developers to succeed with Unreal. So now instead of a 5% royalty after your game earns $3,000 a quarter, you owe Epic nothing until your game earns $1 million. Now, somebody followed up with a question here. Uh, let me see. What happens after hitting the $1 million mark? Once your game earns $1 million, uh, only then do you start to pay a 5% royalty on revenue exceeding that. If revenue drops to under $10,000 a quarter, royalty reporting and payments can then cease. So there you go, 5%. So this is this is a huge thing for, for indie devs and a huge thing, for, honestly, for all of us. You know, like this is an opportunity for developers, to anybody to get in and start making games. And then, you know, it's super easy to release a game now on like Steam or something. And so we're going to end up getting being reaping the, the benefits of that uh, ultimately and seeing, you know, games that are running on UE5 like super fast. Uh, think about VR. You know, there's like, there are people cranking out, just cranking out just sh 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 shitty, uh, you know, VR tech demos and passing them off as games. At least even those are going to look better. <laughs> Time to learn code of lockdown. There you go. Make your, man, make your first million. There you go. But Mike, Epic bad. Yes, Epic has made some epically bad decisions in the past. Absolutely. And even recently. Um, but this is a good thing. We should, we have to, come on, you got to take a little bit of the good with the bad, right? Come on. Uh, time will tell if this turns into the new Unity. Bad games uh, give it a bad rap. That's right. Nope, it's bad. <laughs> Boycott! Mad! <laughs> I don't even make anything VR until Ready Player One style happens. VR chat is getting pretty close. <laughs> VR chat is looking fucking crazy good, man. Uh, need to reward good behavior. That's right. That's right. Um... So yeah, this is pretty. This is pretty crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm pretty, pretty proud of, uh, of Epic for making this kind of decision. Uh, also, it means that they're probably they're still making bank off of Fortnite. So thank you, Fortnite. <laughs> I guess thank you, Fortnite, for footing the bill for all this stuff, offsetting the books, man. Fortnite money. That's right. Dang, man. I'm done making fun of Fortnite. I'm just, that's not happening. <laughs> so yeah, one million dollars. So just shut down your game at nine. No, no, no. What's nice is it's not retroactive. Let me see. So uh, next up, hopping off of that UE5. Next up, this actually just came in today. My boots. Boots. Uh, the Half-Life Alex workshop is now open. I know that VR is not something that a lot of you guys, that the majority of you guys are into yet, but I'm sure a lot of you guys got into it strictly because of, uh, of uh, Alex. Uh, I did play through the entirety of Alex on stream and I loved it especially in the later levels when you get all of your skills and abilities and all of these weapons and everything and you're just kind of you you just feel like John Wick doing all this stuff it's sexy it's so good so they have workshop tools now so now there's a reason to go back and play the game some more now there's nothing on there yet i don't think um but i actually i wonder if it's actually even on the uh let's see steam i wonder if it's actually on here let me see let's see alex uh, update queued uh workshop there it is what's in the workshop now Oh, there's already, there's already instances available. Uh, probably just one, actually. Uh, let me see. Most popular. So there we go. Sustenance. Exciting expansion for Half-Life. Alex, uh, Alex find yourself. Okay, so this was a story there. Piano player's room. We're going to see some, like, some things that are just, you know, trash, you know? But, uh, but yeah, it was a combine combat encounter. A simple workshop example of combat with the combine. I would play this. Absolutely. Combat is so good. Uh, Alex VR. Oh God, can you imagine? Oh God, how, they would. How would they? How would they actually handle whether or not you're teleporting or running or whatever? I wonder how they would do that. It's so easy to teleport from point one, to point one, point two, like duh, 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 so quickly, huh? But I mean, just just playing the game is an experience. Like I mean, the overall the story is good. The way the story ends is is pretty is pretty intriguing. Um, and of course, you know the uh, the combat is just stellar. So I am so happy that uh, we said we'll probably revisit this actually in the future. Once there's a couple of good uh, a couple of good mods on there, we'll probably revisit in the future. And I'll I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a, a run through of it. Um, so, you know, speaking of of. Uh, Oh, this is the whole thing. I'll try to drag this over to my Steam window. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> Speaking of the Xbox Series X. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. I messed that up over here. There we go. Um, time until a nude patch. Yee! <laughs> Minus five days. It probably Honestly, I, I'm pretty sure they would probably wipe that from the, uh, from the, the workshop pretty quickly. That's why you got to get it quick. So, actually, I wonder if they wiped it from the workshop, would it actually like wipe for... Like from your, I guess if you're offline mode, you can enjoy as long as you want. 
Why would you do that? All right, so Halo Infinite will be at July's Xbox Series X reveal event. It's called the Xbox 2020. 20 slash 20. I think, I don't know what day it is exactly. It doesn't say on here. Uh, maybe it's going to be the 20th. That would kind of make sense, right? Um, but I know that some of you guys have played Halo at least once. Maybe you enjoy the story. I personally enjoy the world. Uh, I am a, I'm a fan of, uh, I know this is not Bungie anymore, but it's still Bungie's world, the universe they created. And I've been a, I've been a fan of, uh, uh, of Bungie stuff for since I was a kid. And so, you know, it's funny when I saw Halo Infinite, you know, last year when they did the announcement video, uh, it was an immediate just throwback to me for Marathon Infinity. Yeah, you know, which Marathon Infinity is the final game in the Marathon series, which is the precursor to a well, different universe, but still basically the same uh, universe. But uh, to uh, to Halo is the game they made before they went to Microsoft. Uh, and so, yeah, seeing Halo Infinite, it's kind of like, oh, so this is I mean, Marathon Infinity is the last the last one for uh, for for Marathon. Uh, Halo Infinite's maybe going to be the last one for uh, for them. But yeah. No one cares about Halo, right? Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> it's, it's coming July next month. You guys will see more of that, all right? All right, all right. And even bigger news! <gasps> Golf with your friends. Officially launching! That's right! Golf with your friends is officially launching 1.0. <laughs> we played this a bazillion times here. Finally! I know, finally! <laughs> uh, I could I would expect it to be the end of the Master Chief saga. I'm that that's that's what I'm applying with like the infinite thing. Like that's how they ended Marathon. I'm pretty sure that's probably how they're gonna end uh um uh in Halo. Just kind of be the end of the story. But Marathon was not about the player, it was it was about the AI. That's what it was mostly about. Which I mean you could argue that actually Halo kind of is the same thing. Um you didn't, I didn't you know it's funny, we played this so many times, I didn't realize that it was early access. You know, watching this trailer, it's kind of like wow man, like it really is a robust little golf game it really is like there's so much i feel like we've had so much fun in this dumb game as simplistic as it is it really does bring a lot there's a ton of options i haven't seen the airplane thing what the heck was that that's new but yeah good for them awesome no 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 next the little engine that could was this one of the big fps is it last sub night i uh, i don't remember if it's golf with your friends or golf it can't remember needs ray tracing <laughs> next up that was a weird little glitch there. Mario, <laughs> Paper Mario, uh, the Origami King. I actually just like watching these. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I even play this honestly because I didn't play the first Paper Mario. Um, but I'm always intrigued by the styles that uh, the different themes and styles that they're able to come up with and how they look. Like it just looks. Yeah, the art style is just so good. Like I want to play it. Just for that. The gameplay also looks pretty awesome. Let me fast forward a little bit here. Turn it up. Like, get out of the way. It just looks great. If you've played like Yoshi's Crafted World, like you've seen it, right? Like they, and the, uh, like Knit, Knit Kirby or something. I don't remember what it's called, but there's so many good, uh, art styles that the Nintendo just implements so well and just looks so good. This is ridiculous. So anyways, that's coming out uh, July 17th. Yay! So whenever you're done with, uh, whenever you're done with Animal Crossing, <laughs> there's no end to that. I want this game in me! I mean, I want this game too, man. It looks really good. We'll probably play it. Epic Yarn, that's what it is. Kirby's Ep Epic Yarn, that's right. Look at that. It just looks good. It looks so good. Um, and I guess lastly, oh my gosh, lastly, lastly, uh, the biggest, the biggest announcement of all time. Of all time! Oh shit! Woo! Oh, bitches. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. One and two. September 4th. In stunning 4K. I can't believe that's what it looked like, by the way. When I saw that, I was like, whoa, is that what it looked like? <laughs> yes, it is. I have I have logged, I tweeted about it, misspelling warehouse, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I, have tweet, I tweeted about it because I could not stop thinking about this dumb game. I, I, I love this series. I, lo I had it on Dreamcast and on PC. Like, I, I played the shit out of this game. 
Uh, is Tony Hawk still a big deal? Tony Hawk is a legend. Uh, so I don't know if that's really a big deal. Or not. Yeah, it's a legend. Um, with Bam Margera Fat Edition. I didn't see that, actually, was he? Uh, but what you'll see is, uh, maybe they already showed it, but they do have, it does look like they're bringing back the soundtrack, too, which is, which is in my opinion, an integral part of the, uh, uh, of the game, the, the soundtrack. Online split-screen multiplayer, online multiplayer. Yeah, like, this is, uh, this could potentially be really, really, really good. All, all they, all I want them to do is just basically reskin it, just make it awesome, uh, and not do any, like, crazy, you know, I don't know, whatever. I mean, if they have like, you know, cosmetics or whatever, I'll be fine. But, uh, but for the most part, no. I actually pre-ordered this thing. I actually downloaded Epic Game Store and pre-ordered this thing, like, in the same swoop, okay? Like, it was like, boom, boom, done. Just hand, just, just, that was, I, I abandoned my Epic thing, all that. For this, how dare, I know, how dare you? How dare you? It's been a long time, man. I gotta drop it sometime. Uh, did you pre-order the $100 version that comes with the skateboard? <gasps> There's a $100 version that comes with the skateboard? I would have. Is it really? That's a really shitty skateboard, by the way, but <laughs> that's not going to be a good skateboard. That's something you hang on the wall. That's not something you do anything with. Uh, epic sale going on. Uh, going on to $10 coupon for $14.99 games. Got Witcher 3 for 5 bucks. There you go. It's sold out everywhere. There you go. Yeah, that's right. In GTA 5 this week uh, for $5, I believe. Uh, God, what was, there was another one, right? Was that, or maybe that, that, that was the big one. And then, oh, oh, uh, not at all associated with this, but Wreckfest is $15 on Steam, okay? Don't fuck this up. Next time we go and play and you're like, oh, I didn't get it. Well, guess what? That's your own fault. Okay, so, so yeah, Wreckfest, $15. Okay, right now, go get it. Um, so yeah, I mean, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, soundtrack, everything, man. Like, I, I love this game. I love one, two, and three. Um, three less than the others, uh, which I'm glad they're just doing one and two. I'm okay with that. Uh, but hours, 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 hours spent on just like one map, like just one map, like easily. It's crazy. I'm so happy. I'm so, so, so ecstatic that this is actually coming to, uh, uh, we're going to remaster of this. Um, did you have a skater phase? I did. I did. I was more a rollerblader ultimately, but I did have a skateboard. I did skate. Um, and, uh, but no, I ended up, uh, I, I, Roller skate, so it was a roller skate, skateboard, and then uh, a bike, you're biking there too. I was always on wheels, I was always on wheels. Uh, and so, yeah. That's why my balance is so good. You'll, ne you'll never catch me tripping. Uh, if I can escape VR long enough, I might get it. What are you doing in, what are you doing in VR? That you're not, you can't escape. You're in VR chat, you're in VR chat. Fall 76 is also free for the weekend, just saying. There you go. Hey, you know what? That's a pretty good, uh, that's a good one to check out because I'm hearing a lot of good things about Fallout 76 Wasteland, the update. Uh, so yeah, go, uh, like, go check it out if you're, if you're interested. You're not a skateboard person. Might do aggressive inline. That's right. So rock my wheels and everything, baby. Good is relative. Oh. Mm, Fallout 76 redeemed like No Man's Sky. What? Uh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's the ultimate. That's the ultimate. <laughs> Don't tell my secret plan. She dragged me to it. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, all right. That's uh, boy. Is that it for the news? Sometimes I feel like I spent all morning on the shit, and we just blow right through it. Like, just don't even appreciate. We don't even appreciate the news. We just do it. Damn. Yeah, that's it for the news, guys. So don't think I forgot anything. But Kimmy's not here to tell me that I forgot something. So, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Chat, hang out for a second. I'll come back and finish this beer with you guys. Uh, thank you all of y'all for being here and for helping out with stuff. And... Boo-boo.